So here is a step-by-step -step process for how to file for a mechanics lien on a vehicle that has been presented for repair at an automotive facility and then not paid for or abandoned at that facility. And this process we're going to look at happens to be from the state of Kentucky, according to their statute KRS 376.270. But this same process and logic applies to almost all 50 states. And here's the reason why. The process of involuntarily removing title ownership from an individual or a corporation is governed by federal law. Federal law issues the statutes that each state must conform to with regard to vehicle title ownership. And a vehicle title is a legal government document. You'll see it's a certificate type origin, which doesn't get printed on just a blank sheet of paper. It has scroll work, it has watermarks, and it's only issued by a government agency. In most states, that agency is called the Department of Motor Vehicles. Some states call it Department of Transportation or Secretary of State, or they have some other agency which issues vehicle titles. And in order to remove the valid ownership from a person who's owning a vehicle, you have to have either that prior title signed over or go through a very detailed series of steps to get the title removed from the prior owner and transferred to the automotive facility. And here's what the steps are. First, it says that any boat or motor vehicle remaining in the possession of a person engaged in the business of selling, repairing, or furnishing supplies for vehicles and to whom the charges for such repairs have been owed for a period of more than 30 days may have the vehicle sold to paid for the accrued charges. Very straightforward. If you repair vehicles, sell vehicles, supply uh, materials for vehicles, and you didn't get paid for those services, you have the right to dispose of the vehicle and sell it in order to obtain funding to pay for the repair bill or the storage bill. So your first step is you have to submit a notice by certified mail return receipt requested to the owner of the vehicle. It says and to any other person known to have an interest. So where do you find out the owner of the vehicle? Well, one way is when the vehicle was brought into your facility, you probably have a repair order, which is a document that that owner signed saying, please fix my car. Here's my quote. Here's my uh, estimate. In addition, you probably are required, it doesn't specifically say it on this document, but KRS 376-280 says that you have to do a title search. Every state's going to require that as first step. What you do is you request from the Division of Licensing a printout of the title record for that vehicle. And by using the VIN number in an official request form, every state has a different form for this, you have to request it in writing and get a printout. Get the printout in writing. Don't take it verbally. Don't get it any other method except for in writing. And here's why. This first step, sending a notice by certified mail, is going to come back later as a requirement when you get the title. And if you did not send that certified mail to the proper owner's identity, your title application may be rejected. So get a title printout from the DMV that title printout will have the name of the owner and the name of any lien holder. So if the owner had a loan on the vehicle and we're making payments, that lien holder needs to be notified. How do we know? It says any other person known to have an interest in the vehicle. That would be a lien holder. If you don't send a proper notice to the lien holder, your entire mechanics lien 
process can be invalidated later. So make sure you send it to that lien holder. Also, if you're aware of any other third parties which have an interest in the vehicle, you also want to notify them as well so you don't run the risk of overlooking anybody. If somebody comes forward later and says, look, I have an interest in this vehicle, then your lien sale can be invalidated. And we'll talk later on in the video about what could invalidate your lien sale and you lose all your money. Step number three is you have to place an advertisement in a local newspaper once a week for three consecutive weeks. Basically, you have to notify the general public saying that this vehicle, model year, make, VIN, all the other information, even the name of the owner, is going to be sold at a public auction on a certain date. And the reason why that's required is in case there's any other people with interest to come forward to pay your bill, it gives them that opportunity. In addition, the state wants as many people as possible to know about this auction so that it gets the highest bid. So hopefully the bid that comes in from buyers pays your repair bill. Because if it doesn't pay your repair bill, technically you still have the right to go after the vehicle owner for the difference, what you lost. So they want to get as many people as possible to know about it so that it gets the highest bids at the auction. Now, remember, as a vehicle lien holder, as a creditor, which you are as a licensed automotive facility, you have the right also to bid on this vehicle. You can put in your own bid. If you don't want to sell it to somebody, that's okay. You can put in your own bid. Remember, you don't have to pay anybody any money. If, let's say, your bill is for $1,000 and somebody comes and bids 800 and you bid 801 you win the vehicle. You get to keep the vehicle. You don't have to give $801 to anybody. It's basically paying yourself. So you can bid on the vehicle. After you place that advertisement in the newspaper and every state's going to have some requirements of time frame like 10 days before the sale 30 days after the debt is due and pay attention to those dates because if the dmv or licensing division sees an application that comes in that doesn't meet those dates they'll reject it and we'll talk more about rejections also a mechanics lien created by this process is superior to any perfected security interest. So if Wells Fargo has a loan on that vehicle for $10,000, doesn't matter. You get priority on the vehicle if you follow this process properly. Now, what paperwork are you going to need? Here's what you put together to submit to get a title. In compliance with the statutory requirements, the following documents are required from the purchaser. So if you sell this at auction, you have to provide all of these to the buyer. If you're keeping it, you submit these to the DMV. First, you need an affidavit of this sale completed by the seller, which is the automotive facility or you. What does that look like? Well, that's this form right here, TC 96159. It's an affidavit saying that I did all these things. We went through the process. We satisfied the lien. We followed all the steps and you have to sign it and notarize it. This form has to be notarized by the, uh, the mechanic repair shop. Next, you're going to need a bill of sale from the repair company on the company's letterhead selling the car to somebody else, selling it to yourself or an employee or to the bidder of the vehicle. It has to have, it must include the year, make, model, and VIN number of that vehicle on that bill of sale. You also need an application for title. This is the standard application that everybody would use to get a title. If you're moving to Kentucky or switching over a title or you sold a vehicle, you need TC 96182 to transfer this vehicle from one party to another, and you need that as well. 
Last, you'll need documentation of the other steps. You're going to need the affidavit of publishing in the newspaper. Basically, make a copy of that ad, and if you have an invoice that you paid something for that ad, put those with the package. Also, the certified mail receipts. It's a little green card that goes with the certified mail that you get back showing that it was delivered or attempted to be delivered. Now, one last, and this is for each certified letter. So if you sent it to two owners and a lien holder, every single one of those certified documents will need to be put with this package. One last little kicker. If the vehicle came from out of state or was not currently titled in this state, you'll need a sheriff to inspect the vehicle. Check the VIN number, check a few things. If you follow all these steps and submit this package to the licensing bureau, a new vehicle title will be issued to the new owner, whether it's you, whether it's a buyer, you're going to get one of these certificates, a legal vehicle title with your name on it as the owner. So now this vehicle is officially yours or the buyer's. Keep in mind that this mechanics lien process is not like a normal title process. It is highly audited and scrutinized by Department of Motor Vehicle officials. Here's why. This process gives great authority and privilege to a person or a company engaged in the business of selling your vehicle, just like it says. A person engaged in the business of repairing vehicles can use this process to transfer a title where a normal civilian can't. It's a privilege. Some repair facilities and body shops will abuse this privilege. They'll use it to get titles for vehicles for their friends, for their buddies, or maybe even charge a fee to get titles for people who lost their title. The Department of Motor Vehicles is aware that this process is abused and sometimes not used properly. Because of that, they will highly scrutinize and audit every single one of these packages that comes in. They're going to go over it with a fine-tooth comb to make sure that all these dates are met. Was it before 10 days, after 10 days? Did you send the letter to the prior owners properly? Did you put the right address on it? Is the form notarized? Is it signed? They're going to look for things that look suspicious. In fact, if they see that a certain repair shop is sending too many of these in based on how many cars they repair, they're going to come down and check out that place. And this happens a lot. How are they going to know how many cars you repair? Well, they're going to check your sales tax records and your receipts that you submit every year to show how big of a business you are. If you repair 10 cars a month and you submit 10 of these a month, that's going to be kind of suspicious. They know what the ratio is supposed to be. So if you're a repair shop, make sure only use this process for legitimate purposes. It's highly scrutinized. As a matter of fact, you may get a phone call from an inspector at the Department of Transportation asking you some questions about your applications. Don't worry about it. Answer them truthfully. Make sure you have good backup documentation and everything will work out fine. If you're using this process improperly, they'll find out about it. So make sure you follow the steps. Fill out these forms very carefully. We recommend typing them if possible. Handwritten forms, a lot of times somebody has to read manually, where if it's typed, many government agencies have scanning devices that can scan the document and read the characters if they're typed. That way no human has to look at this. The computer does all the work. And if that's the case, it'll be processed faster, less chance for it being rejected, less chance for an audit, and you can get your title for you or your buyer much quicker. Make sure when you're filling out this application that you put in the proper name of the new owner. If you sold it to somebody else, the new owner 
buyer is somebody else. You're the seller, XYZ Auto Body. The buyer is somebody else. Make sure you follow those steps properly. That's a description of the mechanics lien process. Again, this one happens to be from Kentucky. We will have other video tutorials on other states, but you'll see they're very similar. So if you are an automotive repair shop and you're in a different state than Kentucky, you can use this as a guide. Our website, cartitles.com, has a breakdown of all the different states, and we even have all the forms. If you need these forms, you can download these for free, either from the Kentucky Department of Transportation, from our website, but you can get these forms. And then follow the process, follow the tutorials, submit it properly, get a new title for your owner, because here's the thing, if you sell this vehicle at an auction and don't give the owner all the right paperwork they need to get a title at the DMV, think about this, they're gonna go to the Department of Motor Vehicles with an incomplete package. And that agency is gonna see this package and they're gonna be suspicious. Why didn't you give all the right paperwork? Why didn't you follow through? And they might come back and, and ask you questions. Even if they don't, your buyer is going to have problems with the title and they're gonna come back and have problems with your transaction and your purchase because you took their money and didn't give them the right paperwork. Mechanics lien is a powerful process available to automotive facilities. Use it to your benefit as a privilege of your business. Just be aware that this is a bureaucratic process. The government agencies don't operate the same as a private business does. Private business will try to help you make it easy to do the transaction. Government agencies look at this form and say it's either 100% good or they reject it. So remember, you're dealing with a government agency which might be a little more bureaucratic and inconvenient to deal with rather than a private company that tries to make the process efficient and simple. Again, more resources on our website. If you have any questions, you can contact us or watch other videos from this tutorial package.